This is one of multiple videos where I'm discussing questions that I've been asked about CML. Please have a look at this playlist to see other questions that I've been asked. So as an example, how to export and import device configurations and topologies in CML, how to connect my CML topology to an external network. In this video, I'm gonna be answering a number of questions such as how to capture packets using Wireshark, what are the default usernames and passwords of Linux devices, and how to add additional interfaces to a device. Use the menu below to jump to a specific topic of interest. You may not be interested in all of these topics, so use the menu below to jump to the specific topic of interest. Okay, let's get started. So a question that's often asked is, how do I capture packets within CML? When you click on a link, you can click packet capture and you can specify as an example, the number of packets you wanna capture and click start and that'll start capturing packets using the built-in packet capturing system within CML. Now at the moment, this is very basic, but Ralph, one of the core developers has sort of teased what's coming in version 2.1 of CML. In version 2.1 of CML, you can actually interrogate the packets in a very similar way to using Wireshark, but it's all done through the web browser. So in this example, it's quite simple. If I ping google.com as an example from this router, which is bridged to the outside network using an external connector, in the Wireshark capture, I can see those ICMP requests and replies. So I can see the ping information. I can see other captures. As an example, if I enable OSPF on this router, I should see OSPF messages being sent out into the network. Now it won't form a neighbor relationship with other routers because this router is being natted to the outside world. So there aren't any other routers to form a neighbor relationship with, but notice you can see the OSPF hello packets. This doesn't give you that much information at the moment. Once again, in the new version of CML, version 2.1, you'll be able to see a lot more information. Now, what you could do, if you wanna see a lot more information than this, is add a device to your topology and capture the packets within CML. So as an example, install T-Shark on a Linux device and then capture the packets through T-Shark. So that's one option that you could do. Or you could span a port to a Windows VM that's running Wireshark. It's not that great in this version of CML. Version 2.1 will be a lot better. Okay, so let's look at some of the default usernames and passwords. So I'll create a lab here called Linux and then what I'll do is drag some devices in the topology, such as the Alpine device, the server device, desktop device, and Ubuntu. Ubuntu is one of the devices that I'm gonna demonstrate quite a lot because I wanna show you how to use it for network automation. The passwords for these devices are either Cisco Cisco username password or Ubuntu Cisco. Now the Ubuntu device might take a while to boot up, but notice the server device is already booted. So this is running core Linux. Username password is Cisco to log into that device. On Alpine Linux, it's the same once again. Username is Cisco, password is Cisco. Desktop, username is Cisco, password is Cisco. The Ubuntu device takes a bit longer. Username here is Ubuntu password is Cisco. But if I go back to the desktop, we can see the details of this device. It's using Linux Alpine. So most of these are using Alpine Linux. You'll see it's the same on those two Linux devices, but the server is using tiny core Linux. So once the Ubuntu device boots up, I can log in with a username, Ubuntu password, Cisco. And there you go, uname dash A. We can see it's Ubuntu Linux, Ubuntu 18.04.3 LTS. 
Now, a question I've also been asked is, does CML support Docker? At the moment, it doesn't. These are virtual machines. These are not Docker containers. That means that you won't lose the configuration or applications that you install, unlike what happens in other platforms. So these devices are not Docker containers. They are virtual machines running within CML. Now, another question that I've often been asked is how do I add additional interfaces to devices? To add additional interfaces to a device is fairly simple. To demonstrate this, I'll drag a layer two switch into my topology. And what I'll do now is click on the device and go to interfaces. And as you can see, four interfaces have been added. When I click add four interfaces, an additional four interfaces have been added. And if I click add four interfaces, notice an additional four interfaces have been added. Click that again, and you can see the maximum interfaces have now been reached. So I've been able to add a whole bunch of additional interfaces to my device by simply clicking on add interfaces. Okay, so I hope that answered some of your questions. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal. I want to wish you all the very best.